Hey, this is Brett the Hitman Hart, and you're listening to the Smack Raw Podcast. Okay, well, has this always been a thing? Hey, everybody, welcome to the Smacked Raw podcast, uh, SmackDown edition. Uh, thank you all for joining us. My name is Kyle Tyson. I am joined by my regular SmackDown host, uh, Mr. RN. How are you doing, bud? Little good, boss man. What's up? Oh, not much. About to recap a show that I didn't get to take a note for. I'm not going to lie, a little nervous. Um, gonna do a lot of leaning on you and looking at Twitter to guide us through tonight's show. Uh, the first part of the show, I got us towards the middle, got a little shaky. Uh, <laughs> we'll get through it. I remember most of the night. It's really just about trying to keep everything in order. Um, right. man, we're a wrestling recap show. We we cover AEW, WWE, we do other big shows as well. Um, Man, we'd love to thank you all for joining us once again. We're also live uh, on twitch.tv uh, forward slash the standing streamer. Uh, make sure you check us out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then on the off days, uh, you can catch his show, Putting You Over. Streamer's fucking awesome, dude. I'm not going to lie. The man, the man interviews a ton of wrestlers and other talents, um, all from behind a bar. Fucking lucky, dude. Uh, so yeah, check us out, man. Subscribe, make sure, you know, anytime we go live, all that fun stuff, dude. Uh, and if you ever actually happen to miss a stream, you can catch us over on YouTube. Uh, same name, YouTube, the smack drop pod or smack drop podcast, excuse me. And, uh, you can catch us over there too as well. Um, and then lastly, we're the exclusive recap show for wrestlingnewsworld.com. Check them out. Bookmark that page awesome wrestling news website uh once again where you can catch streamer interviewing people live they do interviews and and uh hot takes all sorts of fun stuff and articles it's a good read man check them out all right uh i don't know oh yeah shit rn check out the shirt man Check out the shirt, official Smack Draw Podcast t-shirt. Get yours today. Heading over to the patreon.com forward slash Smack Draw Podcast. Go ahead. Subscribe. Man, I'll send you out a shirt right away. I'll send it out. We'll send out stickers. We'll let you do video submissions of unpopular opinions, hot takes, questions, what the fuck ever. We'll just put your face on our show. Um, along with a whole bunch of other stuff. Patreon.com Smack Drop Podcast. I hate it, man, because RN's making me crack up. You guys don't see it. Like, they see a graphic <laughs> and RN's showing off the damn shirt, man. All right, man. We're here to talk about SmackDown. Uh, RN, in a nutshell, SmackDown. Pretty good, right? It's a show. I'd say it was, it, was, it was a high C, low B show. Okay. Which for SmackDown, that's pretty much an A. <laughs> oh, man. Um... I forgot to mention one thing. I forgot a big thing. I'm so sorry. I'm just nervous. I'm nervous tonight. I don't have notes, okay? Um, <laughs> for the $25 tier, not only do we send you a t-shirt, we'll actually plug your show. Um, you guys got to make sure for this month, me and him don't always see eye to eye. Not going to lie. Usually, if you catch him on air or me on air, we're not saying the nicest things about each other, all right? But because I signed a contract, I'm obligated to tell you about uh, D Rod's Twitch channel, <laughs> twitch.tv forward slash D R O D 2222. Uh, you can catch him playing WWE 2K20, just not that well. But check him out. He does some the weird naked stuff. Guy? Huh? Just the naked guy? This is the naked guy, apparently. I don't know, man. That popped up in our chat. They said he streams naked or something. Yeah, somebody said that. I think Katie said it too. I'm like, wait, what? I don't know, man. I don't know. But he paid us money, okay? So we got to plug his show. Love Check him out, man. <laughs> oh. Yo, I love D-Rod. <laughs> Fuck, man. All right. <laughs> Smackdown. <laughs> oh, shout out to Streamer who who threw that in the chat. Made sure I didn't forget. Um, fucking hell, dude. <laughs> Yo, I'm so unprepared. <laughs> I got you, bro. I got oh, you. Oh, man. Uh, once again, you said hi, B. Or high C, low B. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree with you. Mm. Yeah, I uh, I think um, I think the the Roman and Jey Uso, right? Not Jimmy. Jey Uso. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, the other also. Yeah. The uh, I think I love their dynamic. I I love it, man. I love the dynamic. I'm I'm waiting for something big to happen between them. Um, but seeing them on air together, the chemistry is actually really cool. Yeah, you, um, I mean, you can tell that they're family for real and that they fuck with each other for real. You can definitely tell. Hell yeah. Oh, man. But uh, go ahead. Kick us off, man. Kick us off. What, what did we start the night with? It started off with a like a replay package of last week and everything about <clears throat> how Jimmy got the shot and everything and Paul going and talking to him to get him into the four-way and all that shit and then they come out and Paul drops another fucking fire promo. Yeah, he's I I love that he gets to change his dynamic. He's not a one trick pony like the way he delivers his promos with Brock Lesnar doesn't translate to everybody else. No. And that's really fucking refreshing, man. He threw a little bit of his uh his Brock act into it tonight, mm-hmm. but it was still for the most part, I mean, the way that he's coming at it like with Brock, he always made it like they were equals and they were doing this together. It was, that's not how this promo came off tonight. I mean, he flat out said I was doing what my boss told me to do about yeah. getting Jimmy into the, uh, into the match, which to me, that was, that was something different that caught my, caught my attention. And I'm like, I, I kind of got behind it more because especially how they're playing up this tribal chief, chief shit. They said it two, three times. They mentioned the bloodline in the promo, uh, the best part when he was talking about uh, Jimmy winning, he was like, he decrowned a king, he braved a brogue, and he solved a riddle. I was like, oh, shit. I yeah, that was, that was really clever. I loved that. The solve the riddle line was a very nice touch at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jay came out, man. Jay came out. Uh, nice little confrontation. Uh, very, very uh, smoldering, like something brewing under – the surface here but roman roman's telling him he's proud of him and everything uh can't wait to face him but of course uh it was it was jimmy's or excuse me jay's night last week you know and this is his time but you know obviously come uh fucking what's a clash of champions it yeah. won't be his time then. And then I love that he tells him, like, take your eyes off the belt. Stop looking at the belt. Put look that at down me. My nose. I was just about to say that. Don't look at my belt. Look yeah, at me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was fucking cool. And then, of course, he drops the fun line. He was like, you know, just like kids. I'm, just like when we were kids, I'm going to beat your ass. I'm going to whoop your ass. That's all I can think about. I'm going to whoop your ass just like we was kids. <laughs> yeah, man. I thought it was and it's cool. all love. That's what he said. It's we'll all whoop love, your ass like we were kids, But it's all love. Dude, Roman's going to fucking murder him. Roman is gonna murder gonna him. Shit, man. Like, and I think it's gonna go beyond beating him. Like, I think he's gonna toy with him. It's gonna go beyond a match, and he's gonna. I don't know, man. I just feel like Roman, I don't think that for some like for some reason. Like, I don't think that at all. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna be like the finger of death type shit. But I think it's gonna be some smazzy shit. We'll see. All right, we'll we'll see. Um. So. Uh, Hold on one second. Uh, don't you think Roman has to just show up and win? I don't think that's going to happen at the pay per view streamer. I think that will be his. They they hyped up tonight's match, which it was a non match. Let's be honest. We'll we'll touch into it because it it fits the whole new moniker. But um, but yeah, I don't know. I think I think that'll be really his like first match. Match will be at the pay per view. Um. Uh, next up, we had the. A intercontinental title match between Jeff uh, Hardy and AJ Styles. Uh, as they were announcing, Sami Zayn is is furthering his character thing where he takes over production. Uh, he tells them to, you have to announce it as an exhibition match. Sami's never lost the title. Uh, it's it's just the whole justice for Sami bullshit. Um, All facts. All facts. I love fucking Adam Pierce though. Uh, yeah. Sammy's like you're out here to fix it. Adam Pierce is like, no man, you gotta go. Like, this is t- like, come on, man. Like, why are you doing this? Yeah, like, come on. <laughs> I don't want to deal with this paperwork. Come on, bro. <laughs> yeah, S- Sammy's ushered off. We get um, we get a pretty straightforward uh, match between Jeff and AJ Styles. AJ gets the jump on Jeff. However, Jeff gets a quick twist of fate. Um, from there, pretty straightforward match. Nothing really to write home about. Uh, and then, of course, we get a non-finish. Sammy attacks AJ Styles, then gives a haluva kick to Jeff Hardy. Uh, match is tossed out. Jeff, we cut away. We come back. Jeff is trying to walk up the ramp. He's waving to 
the uh, Thunderdome and then just fucking collapses on stage. Um, and then uh, we get a couple more segments, but we'll just wrap it all up into one one little tight yeah. bow here. Uh, later in the night, uh, they said they believe that Jeff Hardy may have had uh, uh, dehydration. But then we get to the trainer's room. They say that he possibly has the flu. Sammy comes in there, insinuates he has coronavirus. <laughs> it was very quick, but I caught it. He's like, I don't definitely. think you have the flu. I think you got something worse or something. And definitely <laughs> some corona insinuation. Um, and then they brawl. They brawl in the trainer's room. That's it. Uh, we're definitely getting a fucking alcohol causes dehydration, Tommy Streamer. Dude, no. come on, man. It come does. On. He's an inspiration, Tommy. Allegedly. Allegedly. That fucking, fucking <laughs> pull apart in there. That was like one of those fights at school where the teacher's like, don't really give a shit and don't want to break it up. The trainer's like, guys, come on, stop. Please, <laughs> don't do that. Please don't fight. Please stop. Like, they're tearing up your office, bro. What the fuck? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. No, you'd let him fight. You'd let him fight. They're, they're, not, a, they're not really a... You wouldn't really have to break him up. Although I think I Sammy would kill Jeff just because Jeff's body is fucking destroyed. Um, do you think there was a slight jab at Matt Hardy? Because they said uh, when Jeff collapsed, they made sure to note that um, they were like, we we have it confirmed Jeff did not lose consciousness. <laughs> that, yes, absolutely. You think, you think that's a jab at Matt, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Especially all the shit they were talking about the weekend and shit with Rusev and everything. They definitely... We're taking a jab at that. Like, I'm at this point. I'm like, I want WWE to start getting petty. Like, I know that they're like snubbing their nose. I'm like, we're not gonna mention them. Like, no, they never stop running your name through the fucking dirt. Eventually, <laughs> some shots need to be fired. And I want it to be from SmackDown too, which is the worst fucking show on TV out of all the wrestling products we have. And I want all the shots to come from SmackDown that continuously kicks AEW's ass in the ratings every week. <laughs> But AEW acts like they're like like they're winning a battle. No, hey, I want SmackDown. They broke a million. They broke a million, man. And what's SmackDown probably do tonight? It's on, Two? The uptick. it's on the uptick, man. It, it's not on the uptick till they do it more than once. All right. Yeah, I have only, a feeling they're not breaking a million next week. They've only done it twice in their whole year existence, and it was the first night. And technically, the last night that they've had. So. Well, no, they broke a million. I think their first two shows. I think well, this is their, I think this is their third show. They broke a million. You sure? I, either way, I mean, what's what's two? What's three? It's the same it's thing. Still not beating yeah. Smack at all. Hey ever. man. Hey now. <laughs> Don't I go just that's the my part. AEW. I'm not insulting. I just want AEW fans to like realize that like you're beating NXT. We got it, bro. The the developmental third third tier. <laughs> Raw or SmackDown doesn't even admit that they're actually in a show. You're beating those guys. You're not beating SmackDown, which is by far. I will. I like. I watch Impact more than I. The only reason why I watch SmackDown is because we do a recap. Like, yeah. If I had a choice, I will watch Impact and not SmackDown. If I'm being 100 percent honest, and they're still kicking AEW's ass every week. Just, just. I just want. I always. Anytime I see an AEW person bring up ratings or anything like that, that's the first thing I throw. Out. Like, no, no. <laughs> Anyways, Sorry, Napoleon. Let's talk SmackDown. As much as I'd love to carry this conversation, and trust me, I really would. Um, uh, I see. I see. Oh no, we're on the. Uh, well, backstage, AJ Styles was interviewed. Did he say anything? Right. I missed this. Did he say anything about a triple threat? This is, one, this is where I got. If he had two, I didn't catch much. Most of it either. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we'll pass. I'm going to assume he didn't because they'll make it. They'll make a more official announcement. I'm pretty sure AJ didn't mention. It to an inner backstage interviewer. Uh, okay, so here's where I take a little bit of umbrage um, with what's going on. The um, Raw next week in your face. Uh, fucking, <laughs> dude, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, we're getting the champion versus champion match, right? Uh, tag team wise, we're getting yeah. uh, Street Profits taking on yeah. Nakamura and they called back to continuity for the first time ever. The quarterly, uh, whatever it is, sh not shake up, what the exchange or whatever, they actually called uh, called that out and spoke about that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry, it's someone called me out for saying the word umbrage, and now I'm really <laughs> concerned if I said it wrong or whatever. I don't get a standing streamer. So umbridge word count too. I'm really confused about this. <laughs> <laughs> but no, my, my issue that I take with it is uh, 
the two tag team champions are taking each other on at Raw in your face. And um, but what's what's the theme of Clash of Champions? What's the whole gimmick? It's every belt has to be put up. I thought Clash of Champions was champions from both brands take each other on. Or am I thinking Survivor they, Series? That's Survivor Series. Clash of Champions just every belt is in the Federation. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I was, Which really I was, what you're saying is SmackDown. It would probably make more sense if you did it th- did it that way. Yeah. At Clash of Champions, because then there's actually champions clashing, but yeah. that's true. <laughs> yeah, Clash of Champions is just every belt's on the line. Got you. Okay. I don't know why, but for the last week I was thinking that the whole gimmick for this pay per view was uh the champions all taking each other on. No, that would I mean, no, no, that's definitely Survivor Series. That's Survivor Series. At least the last Series. couple of years that's that's been Survivor Series, SmackDown versus Raw. Yeah. Okay. It just means, yeah, everybody is promptly correcting me in the chat. Thank you, guys. Um, (laughs) (laughs) All right. But, yeah, yeah. So, uh, anyways, Street Profits come. They crash the Champions Lounge, which, dude, if that lounge couldn't look any more fucking lame, you can tell that shit is, like, eight foot by eight foot. (laughs) Like, like it's missing a wall. (laughs) It's just a tarp. It it probably doesn't have any walls. It's literally just a tarp and two tables. And a backdrop. Yeah, bad. There's one table, actually. Uh, Look like they got some popcorn. I don't know. I I'm I'm pissing on it, man. It's it's the champions lounge. All right. I did like that Shinsuke told him don't touch the popcorn. I did pop for that. I oh yeah, that. man. Um, like his drum set or Dale's drum set. Don't touch it. Yeah, but the street profits there. Just 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 there to egg with them and um, mess with them. And uh, while Nakamura and Cesaro go have their match with Lucha House Party, which um, with exception of the very opening segment with Grand Metalik was just a prolonged beatdown of Lucha House Party's quote unquote leader, um Kalisto. Fucking yeah, it made no fucking sense. No, they beat the piss out of him. They beat the brakes off his I ass. was so I was expecting him to uh um I was expecting him to go for a tag to Dorado. In Dorado, mm-hmm. just to leave him high and dry. I thought that was how the story was going to play out. But um, Metal League was his partner. It wasn't even Dorado. Two thousand. Yeah, my so. bad. Yeah, Grand Metal League. No, no. What you're saying makes sense and would have made sense for the storyline that they're pushing. But he wasn't even his fucking partner. It was it was a uh, Metal League? That's true. Which, by the way, Metal League needs. Uh, to get these away guys from are that. super talented, but the longer they look like they belong in Lucha House Party, the least I care about them. I wish they could just right. get a like a repackage. And push fucking Grand Metal League to the moon out of Take all the of them. Take the and put them in down there in NXT with Phantasma in them. Fuck yes. Take it, man. All the way. Dude's so goddamn talented, man. Yes. And in he's the been ring, doing he nothing. Yeah, How nothing. long ago was the Cruiserweight Classic? Two years? Three years? Fucking ages ago. Um, nah, he needs a spotlight on him. It does. But uh, anyways, Street Profits, throw a party. They pop up. Um... In the uh, on the Titan Tron, they're partying. Uh, out of everybody I saw there, I think Drew Gulak was the only one I recognized. Uh, was getting down. Gulak. That big black dude, like he's been on. They always show him in the crowds, like when they first started doing the NXT crowds. Like he's, they show him everywhere. I'm like, who the fuck is he? Like, is he a wrestler or is he just like a producer or something? But like, he's literally on anything that needs extras. He's there, he's, like every single time. Yeah, I see him now. I see. I'm like, I'm on the. WWE's Twitter page. I yeah. see exactly. You got the top button too. I, dude. Yeah. Oh man, I'm not a fan of the man top button. I'm sorry. I'm, it, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. RN bro, no, don't save this. I don't have hair, so like I'm never gonna hate on people to have hair. <laughs> <laughs> My skin is almost yeah. over. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like I probably I'm, shouldn't throw uh, stones in this glass house. So. <laughs> Fuck yeah, but they throw a party. It causes a distraction, and uh, Kalisto rolls up. Uh, who, Cesaro, I think? Yeah, Cesaro. Yeah, I'll tell you this. If I ever become a wrestler, my finishing move is going to be the roll-up. It is nobody kicks out of the roll-up, ever. No. Ever. Especially in this day and age in WWE right now, the roll-up is the most devastating fucking finisher in the Federation right now. No, It doesn't matter. It is 
Lights out. If you roll up, you're going to win. <laughs> no, you're right. Uh, it was, uh, for the longest time, it was Baron Corbin's uh, Achilles heel. Yeah. Yeah, man. And you see our truth How many times has he won that belt with the roll up? 49 times or some shit? It's true. It's, yeah. it's, no, it's fucking true, man. Our truth. That's right. How many championships have we gotten in the modern era? Right. Championship it's, wins. It's really the most devastating finisher, maybe in the history of fucking wrestling, bro. Yeah. Maybe. Fucking yeah. hell, man. Hell if yes. we ever get this back raw wrestling back up, y'all better change that to my, to my finisher. I want the roll up, dude. Yeah, and you have to like get the crowd all hyped for it too. Get them all yeah. like cheering loud. Yes, right before like a rainmaker level hype. You just not call the RKO, for it. not the power bomb, no. not the tombstone, <laughs> not the choke slam, the the roll, the roll up. up. I that think I think uh, in over in New Japan, I think that's Yano's finisher is the roll up. I think it is too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think it is, man. Yano like, Yano beat you to it, bro. Archer. New Japan's Archer. Okay, now, um, so essentially, I think so. My stream got really fucking shit. For the Bailey promo, but I'm just gonna assume it was uh, uh, essentially I was never her friend. No, not at all. No. Oh, go ahead. Tell me what it was about. He pretty much said that who knows you better than me. You think I don't know that you were just waiting on your chance to to do it to me? I just did it to you before you got the chance to do it to me. Uh, I pulled the trigger first. Yeah. Yeah, that makes fucking sense. She never questioned their friendship. She said none of that. She didn't like fuck you. None of that. She just said I did it before you could do it to me. Hey, she that's said smart, you did man. It to me too many times in my career. I wasn't gonna let it happen again. Got you. Hell yeah, man. No, good for Bailey. Bailey would have looked dumb as fuck. This whole title run right. would have been worth fucking nothing if Sasha pulled right. the trigger first and turned on Bailey. She would have looked like a moron. And just how they did it too. She brought the chair out that she fucking like snapped Sasha's neck with, and like just sat in the chair in the middle of the ring, like leaned over, just literally talking to the talking to Sasha. Like, like she, it was it was like she was on the other side of the camera. Like well, it was, I don't know whose idea it was or who came up with it, but like it 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 felt bigger than a normal Bailey promo, if that makes any sense. Like, I did catch this part. Roadshow just reminded me. He said Bailey also said that she used Banks to get where she is. Yeah. And then she botched her line and said, I used her to become two belt Banks or yeah. uh, Sasha two belts <laughs> yeah. or Bailey, Bailey two belts. <laughs> like fucking um, Bailey dose straps. Like, yeah. I can't wait for that to wind up on Botch Mania. I do remember seeing that. I was like, oh, yeah, she fucked the shit up out of that line, didn't she? Well, she I didn't mean, like pay attention to it because she was, it felt like my mom was like, talking shit to me and like mad at me for something how she was like looking into the camera and shit and talking. <laughs> started getting fucking like, <laughs> like uh just bad vibes man like i didn't do the dishes or something sure i stayed out too late she was like waiting in, in the chair for me when i got home like that, that's what it felt like <laughs> oh no oh no i can't have that um that uh so that followed the fatal four-way match for the number one uh contendership shot at uh bailey's uh belt First out was Nikki Cross. Bailey hit Nikki with a with a fucking chair, I guess because they looked at each other. I, I guess, um, which made which, no uh, sense. But I wasn't mad at it. Yeah, uh, Nikki. Took, uh, Nikki ended up winning this four. We'll cover some of the extra stuff, but I will say that Nikki Nikki won this four way uh, and had to eat a lot of shit. Yeah, like she she fucking ate the chair shot beforehand. She ate uh, damn Sister Abigail from. Alexa Bliss, I can't wait to talk about Women's that. Right. Um, Women's Right. Yeah, Nikki fought a damn good uphill battle. She took a super kick from Tamiya, too, as well. Yeah. Um, this match was sloppy as shit. It was terrible. Was it bad? So Yeah, my Once stream to... my stream literally just portrayed BT Sports, and all I got was the audio. Once it streamed, once it got to down to like, cause there was a, probably about a five or six minute. It may not have been that long. It just seemed like that long, but it was like a five or six spot where it's just fucking Lacey and Tamina, and it was not not good. Yeah, uh, Roadshow, cause so I didn't see this, so I'm just going by what you say in the chat is saying. Roadshow saying, don't forget, Nikki had to carry Tamina the whole match. Oh yeah, it, like I said, they 
Lacey too. Like, I don't hope I don't give a shit how much of a fan of Lacey you are. Like, if you watch that match and can tell me that you think she was a good wrestler tonight or put on a good match tonight, you are literally you're on something or just a stand because that match was ass. And like a couple times, like I really thought that, like I I, I didn't even like I couldn't even tell who was gonna win because Nikki was still selling the sister Abigail. So I'm like they're gonna fucking let Lacey win. And then Tamina started getting in some offense. Then Nikki came in and like there was literally a spot where Nikki was like waiting on Tamina to put her up for the Samoan drop thing. And it took Tamina like five minutes to put her up on her shoulders and shit. Like, I'm like, what is she? Did she like forget her own fucking finishing move? Like she's been doing a Samoa drop for 35 fucking years. Like, did she forget that's what she was supposed to do? Like it was, it was, this was a trash match. I'm sorry. Yeah. The best part was uh, Bliss, Sister Abigail and looking off into space and walking out. That was the best part of this match. Yeah. Yeah. So I got a, I got a, I got a bone to pick with this too. Um, I take umbrage with this. Uh, fucking. Uh, <laughs> um, so the whole thing is, you know, the best saying when you, when you have a good story going is you, you show, don't tell. Yeah. And commentary was all fucking over Alexa yeah. Bliss. She's looking extra fiend like tonight. Like, oh, she she's did a sister least, Abigail. Like, it looks like the fiend has her in a trance. Like, bitch, that's not even a part of the story yet. Like, there's no official. You guys are the ones telling the story. Like, we get it. We're not fucking stupid, you know? But, like, the fiend hasn't come out. Like, how does commentary have anything to do with this? Like, it was, it was, shit was like, God damn it. I hate it. I, it, it, yeah, it sucks when they try to treat you like you're fucking stupid. When they insult and your intelligence. I didn't have to, like, I don't think she needed to do the fucking Sister Abigail. She could have just fucking, like, I don't know. She could have did anything, like just push Nikki, punched her, anything. Like I, I feel like, like you said, along with commentary and then doing the sister Abigail was all, it was fucking overkill. Like we see it. I didn't mind the sister Abigail because I feel like it is a natural progression with the hair and everything. Yeah. I just commentary. I think just did it way too. But that's what I'm saying. Going along with what you're saying with commentary, like I feel like the sister Abigail was just like unneeded cherry on top. Like, yeah, exactly. Cut out commentary and it would have been fucking perfect. The dreads. We get it. She's, yeah. she's going, you know what I'm saying? Like she has fucking half her head is dreaded Alexa now. Alexa looks but, extra fiend like tonight. Like shut the right. fuck up, man. Come on, man. Um. <laughs> and that's where my notes end. So, uh, it's okay. I'll go by, um, I'm gonna go by, uh, by, uh, there's only like three more segments, anyways. I was gonna say it should only be a couple more things. The fucking Otis and them, which was complete and total ass. Yeah. So, dude. No, I'm gonna hold out hope for Otis. I'm not gonna shit on him yet. I've got, I've got I've got a couple more weeks in me. <laughs> it's not so much Otis, like, because I still think that Otis does have that it factor. Like, he does have something there. Like. It doesn't matter what that jackass is fucking doing. Like, you want to watch it and you want to cheer for him. Like, even me, you know I'm the old man, the old grandpa wrestling, bro. I'm like, I can't, I cannot tell you that I don't pop when I see this fucker on TV. <laughs> like, I do. Like, and you know I'm the old man. I complain about fucking everything. And every time I see this idiot, I pop. I Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so there's something there. I just don't think that putting the, the briefcase on him was a smart move. Well, you know it's also saying? the worst time. To be a fucking money in the bank. <laughs> like, dude, slap him on, slap that shit on him any other year, and it'd probably be better than this year when you've got the he fiend lost it any other year. Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, fucking goddamn, even Keith Lee. And you gotta tell me Otis has gotta bump elbows with these dudes. And not even so much just that, the fact that he's a comedy guy too, on top of. Man. So it's like you, even little kids know that he has no fucking chance. Of oh Jesus! Oh man. Well, anyways, uh, Otis has a match against John Morrison. Um, during the match, uh, Otis comes back. Uh, he has both the briefcase and the lunchbox in hand. During the match, Morrison tosses the lunchbox because last week he uh, revealed that he keeps the contract in there. Um, Anyways, Miz runs off with that. The match continues. Otis ends up winning. Uh, they go backstage. Otis reveals that 
that wasn't the real lunchbox. He keeps a lunchbox inside of his lunchbox, and the contract is in that lunchbox. No, uh, Bruce. Comedy. <laughs> Just fucking. This has Bruce's trash writing written all over it. And I don't care. You Don't defend this to me. You can at me on Twitter. You can hit me up on Facebook. It, this is ass, and it has Bruce written all over it. Yeah. Straight up 1980s comedy. Da-da-da, thin this other Bruce case. Get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> I agree with uh, Standing Streamer. At this point, granted it's not ideal, but at this point, use it to cash in on the tag titles. Cash in on the tag titles. Man. I mean, we every we always say that, but is that legit what it is? Like, because I could have swore it's just for the world, world title championship. But like Miz said backstage, uh, there's loopholes to every contract. That's you know? true. That's very true. Um, we got another teaser. This has got to be if this ain't okay. So listen, I'm pretty sure the model in these vignettes is Mandy Rose. I could be wrong. I was I started to think that especially like when they show like her full back and shit because uh, people were saying like uh, Summer Ray I was like have y'all seen Summer Ray like that bitch is a bean pole I no. I said it to Matt I was like Summer Ray ain't that thick he was like you think she's thick I was like compared to Summer Ray yes that that chick was thick yeah um, I don't know Fontaine don't know. oh hey Fontaine I ain't seen you in a while he says it's Carmella I don't think it was Carmella man I just I don't know. Is diff is it's you know what really gets me though is it's another blonde, right? Like, and I don't mean to be like you know like body image and shaming and stuff like that, but it's uh, I don't know, it's it hard. Type, I've heard rumors Eva Marie, uh, Chelsea Green. Hell, I even heard someone say last week they thought it was um, what's her name from Impact? Uh, fucking oh yeah, um, help us out here. Uh, what's her name's daughter? Mm. Somebody else, Maurice, Katie's too. popped up in the chat. Tessa Blanchard, thank you, streamer. God damn it. Um, what's his name, daughter? Yeah. <laughs> uh, unless this is a complete swerve, because we saw here this is a blonde, so uh <laughs> somebody I think what was it? Somebody said it was uh who else was it? I saw Dana Brooke and nah. then what was it? Dana's way more cut and not as as like. Oh, Maurice! Maurice, I'm like, bro, she just had a baby. I mean, unless yeah. she fucking Kanye workout plan, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Either way, I feel like it's gonna be a letdown because, like, not so much that there's not room for like the whole oversexed image. It has. It's. I believe it's gonna be a swerve. A swerve would make sense because they're hyping up some like. Um, like really sexy package, and it's like we've yeah. seen that character a million times. Yeah, but the, what they haven't done, which I, if you're gonna do this, it better be a bitch that's lights out in the ring. That's yeah. just that, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because every time they do this, this is Lana. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This character is Lana. <laughs> like, yeah, Lana, Mandy Rose before she started getting decent in the ring. Right. You know, it's like this character. Obviously, if that's why I believe it's gonna be a swerve because I feel, and I. It's you know as I say it, I'm like, ah fuck, because I'm like, WWE can't be really that tone deaf, and then it's like, oh yeah, it is WWE. <laughs> yeah, when do they do anything subtle? Like get the hell out of here, yeah, man. Oh man, uh, Roadshow gave you props in the chat. He said Kanye workout plan. He's an awesome reference. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um. So yeah, uh, that was it for the night. Besides the main event. I believe, yeah, the tag team main event. Oh, wait, no, no, no. We had the Firefly Funhouse. That's right. Yeah. Where did uh, me at? Fucking, dude, the walrus scared the shit out of my son. I, I'm i normally in on these, and even I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> I missed the point of it. It went over my head, I guess. I don't know. Like, uh, So I think it was a swerve, once again, coming back to that. Um, <laughs> uh so they were hyping up, you know, a new person to the Firefly Funhouse. Well, everyone's mind instantly went over to Alexa Bliss and maybe Nikki Cross, you know, right. a live person. So when um when he so he announces a puppet, the fucking something the parrot for positivity. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was really fucking weird. 
uh, he Bray announces it's actually a parrot, um, and he's going to be inspirational. The parrot's fucking dead because Bray didn't poke any holes in the boxes. Um, I do love that the the just just the quick transition to uh, technical difficulties. That actually kind of made me chuckle. I don't know what it was. It was just caught me off guard. But um, apparently Vince grows tired with the funhouse because the Vince puppet comes in and tells Bray that he needs an overseer on the sh- funhouse. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so that will be Alexa Bliss's role? Because I'm still convinced Alexa Bliss is coming out. And no, it's like some corporate walrus I want to say it's Paul Heyman. play on he, Paul Heyman. He said, literally, he said, "Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Wally Walrus." It was, okay. it was, my Wally. name is Wall. All right, so it is, it is a play on Paul Heyman. Um, but yeah, that was, that was it. Bray gives the comedic like, "Uh oh, yowie wowie," and then we get a to be continued, and so now we're gonna get a line of skits with a puppet. Paul Heyman, which makes Funhouse. Is this a shot at Paul? Does yes. Paul have heat? And they want to. This wanna... was probably Paul's fucking idea, man. Oh man, I don't know, bro. It's fucking. I think it is. they said supposedly he's he's almost him and him and Roman are hand in hand in the in the booking of Roman. Like, oh. like they do they're doing it together so like shit i like uh, i like what wall uh walrus road show said. <laughs> said it's a subtle way to jab at roman going stale and vince throwing paul at him okay yeah maybe did you see what young, did you see what young kingdom uh tagged us in on twitter no i'll check it out though what they tag us in oh it's definitely carmella it was like a tweet of her tattoos and shit of the person that just did the vignette thing uh and it's a picture of Carmella with that same tattoo. Oh, there you go. Read a de- debut for Carmella. That's got to be TC. Maybe. I'll have to see. Um, anyways. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, it's fucking weird. Um, we'll see where it goes. We'll have to just wait and see. Uh, they're really they're really holding off on pulling the trigger with the Alexa Bliss shit here. Um, although they're just like rubbing in our face now. Although Alexa Bliss, I guess, wouldn't make uh, sense in the fun house because it's around uh the wrong bray wyatt you know what the hell is she gonna hang around with fucking mr rogers bray she hangs she was trying to roll with the fiend so, i know i told you i'm hope is going towards what i said where he, there's a person to represent every puppet in the fun house let's see man yeah we'll have to wait and see uh last up the handicap batch um <laughs> sheamus and fucking um Baron Corbin taking on Jey Uso. Uh, dude, we knew this match was going to be lame as shit because when I when it started, I looked at the clock and there was like five minutes left to air. Yeah, it was like it was literally like 9.57. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was just a play for Roman though, right? To show up and win shit. Jey did all the work. Roman showed up and won. That's what I, I told you. This is why I thought it was, why I think it's going to be a swerve. At Class of Champions, I think fucking Corbin or Sheamus is going to attack Jay, and then Roman's going to come out, spear him, and that's it. Yeah. Someone said, hold on really quick. Someone said that the sister Abigail puppet had pigtails tonight. I think it always has. You just never really paid attention yeah, to I it. Yeah, I think that's the case. I think it always has. I'm looking at it right now. It doesn't look any different. Yeah. No, I, that's that's why I'm saying that's why I keep going holding on to the a puppet to represent another person in the stable. Jeff has the broken down old buzzer. Didn't we say that one? Yeah, we said that. You said that last week. Hey, Bob, me and you on the same page for once. Who would have thought? Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah, it was a lame ass match, handicap match. Uh, Jay did all the work. Jay was gonna win it. Jay was going to fucking win. He took on Cesaro, or Cesaro uh, Corbin and Sheamus all by himself. He's going to fucking win. And um, uh, that was uh, Roman showed up at the last moment, delivered the spear, blind tag spear, wins. A uh, little bit of showmanship. Jay raises Roman's arm. Apparently he doesn't like it if someone touches him. Um, and that's how yeah, SmackDown didn't, went off the air. Man. Didn't it sound like he said, looked at it and said, don't touch my hand? Yeah, it was, it was good. It was a decent episode of Raw. I mean, SmackDown. Jesus Christ, man. 
fucking all flustered. I need I need to take notes. This is plain and simple. This show is I gotta have fucking notes. Uh, <laughs> I am just a complete mess without goddamn notes. Um, okay, we we got through it. Your whole thing, your whole thing is actually getting kind of a, a little bit of attention. So we've done this on previous shows. Let's do it again. Going back to the Firefly Funhouse, uh, who do you think represents the puppets? Um, I I went on record and said I believed Bo Dallas is Ramblin' Rabbit because Ramblin' Rabbit's unlikable and Bray doesn't want anything to do with Bo. Um, and then Mercy, we said, was Jeff. Uh, and then I said Huskis Harris or Husky Harris would be Huskis the pig. But then you said, no, we got to make that Otis because it has to be a, a non-Bray entity. So that right. leaves... Abby or Abigail and this is Alexa Bliss. Okay, Abigail is Alexa Bliss. Uh, is that it? We got to find somebody from Ramblin. I forgot who I said. I know you said Jeff Hardy. Or no, I forgot. You talking about Ramblin Rabbit? No, for the buzzer. Oh, buzzer! Mercy. You said you did say Jeff Hardy. I forgot who I said. I can't remember now. But Jeff Hardy is a decent pick. Yeah, Bob agrees with all our picks, by the way. <laughs> all of them. Bob's on cue, man. And um, we get, and I'd like to have a faction more than three people. We got that on Raw. But what about SmackDown? SmackDown. Hey, look, man. <laughs> it's like the first time since like fucking DX days. Okay, that we right. have a faction with more than three people. That's just. But I mean, do we know how many people is gonna be? Like one day, one week on Raw is thirty five. The next week on Raw is six. No, There's... no, 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 no. On Raw, you have uh, the Hurt Business just went up to four. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, Cedric Damn, yeah. joined up, man. Gave him four members. Black, black. What did uh, Reed called it? Black, black evolution. <laughs> Look, I, I ain't touching <laughs> that shit. Um... No, there's nothing. There's, there's, there's nothing on. You can touch that. That's it. Kind of links up. I mean. We don't really have a bunch of black wrestlers that got to Triple H and Ric Flair's level, so we got to use what we can get. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, how about this? How about the new character, the dead peaceful parrot? I don't think did I did I miss that one? I must have missed that one. Well, no, no, no. The parrot was introduced tonight and ended up being dead. So the, the parrot <laughs> was supposed to deliver inspirational like speeches to you know inspire people. Um, it's a colorful animal. It's a bird, but it's dead on arrival. Uh, I don't even fucking know. I mean, let's just stick with the core guys. Just the core ones. Okay. All right. Fine. I'm trying to think of some dead on arrival is what's sticking to me. Like any any superstar that came out and was just fucking done the moment they debuted. Uh, there's so many. There is a lot. Um, I don't know. Fucking make Tommy Streamer Coco beware. That's a deep cut, man. All right, <laughs> Coco. Oh man. Anyways, that's our show, you guys. Thank you all for joining us, man. Uh, make sure to like, share, subscribe, all that fun jazz. Um, and of course, until next time, y'all have a good one. All right, say bye to our fans. Sorry. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looked like he was about to throw up on the carpet. I was like, what the hell? He was like, edit his sleeve and he just popped up. Like, I'm like, what is he about to do?